output so that's why we need to discuss about multiple random variable so in control problem you had already seen that such kind of dynamical system that you are having a system dynamics okay so what is happening that uh, here you are getting input generally input we denote it by you to control input it happens to be control input like uh, how you uh, you are putting force over a pendulum in a control manner so that force uh, would be a control input and output would be depends upon your choice what you want whether you want uh, displacement or whether you want acceleration or whether you want uh, uh, angular displacement angular velocity uh, whichever depends upon you so that depends upon your choices choices and this one is the system system simply i call it uh, s okay so this is the system so you know that uh, here you are having two random process ut and yt and you try to see the relation between these two uh, thanks to this uh, system dynamics okay and uh, here what is happening that we are having two random processes at the same time so that's where we need to discuss about multiple random process and the associated uh, parameter that uh, one parameter we discuss about a single random process like mean function then variance function then auto correlation function then auto covariance function so auto word is related with that we are dealing with a single random process and uh, there would be one parallel concept for multiple random process would be that cross correlation cross covariance such kind of things would come so that we will discuss in today's class and we will start with very basic example of random process in today's class that we are calling it arrival process generally it happens to be a counting process that we are counting number of arrival of customer or number of arrival of uh, information and any kind of thing it might be any kind of uh, arrival kind kind of quantity it would so so such kind of process would be simplest example of random process and there we will see that a bernoulli process can uh, easily model model simplest bernoulli process is providing a simplest model for arrival process and if you little bit complicated then you will get poisson process and later you will see various other uh, arrival process okay so arrival process simply i would like to say that it is the simplest random process what we see in practical example so coming to today's outline uh, in this lecture first i will give a recap of estimation of parameter in last class i had already mentioned that uh, like in most of learning problem you used to have sample and from there you try to estimate the parameter because you are dealing with uh, parametric form of unknown system so generally in learning problem what is happening that you are having data or sample you are having a sample of size n okay so simply data set we if, if suppose it is a label data set you can denote it by xi yi xi we are calling it input or we can say that attribute or there are various name or regressor so there are various name and yi we are calling it label or response so you might be aware of all those concept in a, a few of the course like one signal system and other kind of thing so your sample size is n that means we are having um, n number of measurement of the process that coming from process so xi we are calling it here uh, attribute or input input is a very general name attribute is also very general name in sense that there might be uh, two uh, dimension might be dimension of xi might be uh, one or more than one okay so that's why in that case better call it attribute so it is the given sample and from you are having a sample and you say that this sample you got from system s but you don't know what is the system this this is in right now it is black box for you so you don't know uh, what could be the um, system how we got that means uh, simply it say that uh, y it would be a function of x and here x the function f is unknown here the f is unknown so it is unknown to us we don't know okay in most of learning problem problem we don't know this function f okay so what is happening that we want to estimate this function we want to estimate this function so what is the approach 
so there are two different approach to estimate the unknown function one we call it parametric approach that's where uh, we are doing and that estimation of the function it becomes parametric estimation of parameter another approach is uh, non parametric so that would be little bit complicated here you uh, here what is happening that by observing the system we come up with n number of observation or n number of data set so simply you can you can say that this one is the given data set but you don't know yeah, that simply uh, that is the scenario okay you don't know the uh, true dynamics of the system the data set is given to you and from here you try to estimate f so what would be f so that you can claim that f of xi would be very much near to yi so that uh, this would imply that uh, yi would be equal to f of xi but here f is unknown to us so how we can uh, how we can know this how we can estimate this one so as i mentioned that there are two approach one approach we are saying that parametric in parametric approach we try to come up with the parameter okay uh, finite dimensional parameter so parametric approach so one kind of thing that uh, scenario is coming like that so uh, suppose you are having uh, uh, one dimensional data and the corresponding response yi so here this kind of data is coming so this data are given to us x is taking value along horizontal axis and the label is taking value along uh, vertical axis so what you say that so this data are uh, you are having so you try to uh, fit a line which will pass through these data points approximately okay so in that case you will say that you are seeing a relation between y and x how it is a linear relation a uh, generally omega not you can write you can write it so it is a linear relation so first is coming intercept and second is coming slope time x so we are saying that here this one is the parametric form it is first parameter and this one is the second parameter so uh, you can easily see that also you can write this one like this way dot product of a b with 1 x dot product simple notation in vector form what we call it so it is parametric form what we say that this is representation of parametric form okay when we are able to so you can call it it is actually f of x so the f of x is having parametric form uh, here parameter is coming so a uh, in order to estimate f it is equivalent to just estimate the parameter so that's why we are talking about estimation of parameter okay and there is another approach that one is non parametric approach that one is uh, right now beyond of your uh, syllabus so you may uh, study it later like uh, one kind of suppose distribution is coming there and you uh, some data is coming from some distribution but you don't know the distribution so directly you want to estimate that distribution without introducing any parameter uh, parameter so that would be uh, that histogram approach and other kind of approach would be there that that one is falling in the category of non parametric approach it is bit it is little bit complicated but this parametric approach is little bit uh, simpler so this simply here in uh, we want to know what is this function so in place of that we do parameterization of this one so parameterization we are putting omega is a parameter in suffix okay so it would be some kind of this uh, depends upon what kind of uh, so simplest if you are talking about regression problem this would be what oh, omega transpose uh, phi of x so phi of x would be some kind of function and x is x is the attribute same what we had already seen, mentioned that so phi is, depends upon the nature what kind of uh, basis function we want to take basis of feature function feature map you can call it it is a basis map or feature map feature map these are very important concept so here in order to estimate this one just we need to estimate this parameter and our job would be done like our data would be sometime like this way this kind of data given to us in the data set 
a sample of size n that one is given we are having this kind of data set so suppose we want to uh, learn the function which is generating this function we okay so the function easily if you try to see it is having a quadratic shape if you try to put so from the this uh, what we call it uh, a scatter plot this we are calling it if you are plotting the data this plot we are calling it a scatter plot from the scatter plot we can uh, uh, roughly estimate that what kind of function it would be in the simple case but in complicated case it is not always possible in the simplest case such kind of possi possibility is there so simply we can say that the response would be a cubic function of uh, in a quadratic function of uh, uh, x attribute x so what is meaning of quadratic function how many parameter you will have so here a, a, a plus b x plus c x square so here you are having three parameter so in short also you can write this one in vector form as a dot product of the vector a b c transpose 1 x x square so this is uh, x square so that's why i had written it one so here you can call this abc in together as a three dimensional parameter vector uh, you can give a short notation of that one as a vector you call it omega so simply you are writing omega transpose and what would be this one this one is coming with respect to a feature function or basis function you can simply call it a phi of x so that is the simplest representation so here this is the ultimate f of x what uh, is in parametric form that we want to estimate it so hat you are doing uh, trying to estimate it so you can put it hat here in, in the estimated value right now just we uh, we are writing the form in this it is just a model structure and it would be the function of uh, x okay so here we want to get an optimal omega in order to uh, estimate the parameter so that we are simply saying the param parameter okay like in distribution if you come in distribution what are the parameter uh, simply in distribution parameter happens to be a, a mu and that mean and variance these are the parameter also proportion also you can these are the parameters so you, generally you have to estimate all these parameter uh, from the given data you don't have the idea of complete distribution just you are having a having some data set some data set that means a sample of size n you are having from there you want to estimate all these so that's why here will, in last class we had already uh, discussed enough so just i will give a recap of that estimation of parameter for a a random process and then we will discuss about multiple random process and uh, if time permit then we will go to discuss about some arrival processes okay so simplest one would be the bernoulli process coming to recap of the last lecture in last lecture i had already discussed about to uh, estimation of mean function of a stationary random process so anyone would recall what was the uh estimate of this one how you are able to estimate here what is happening that uh, random process it is a function of time along with uh, outcome of the random experiment okay so what is happening that in that case if, if simply you say that what is the uh, here you don't know the complete information about uh, random process just you know information about a realization of the random process that means you just know a sample path that means with respect to uh, one or few uh, outcome you know the value of random process along that so that means you know the sample you are having idea of sample path that means here omega one is fixed omega is fixed as a omega one and you are having this scenario uh, like this way and here you come up with a time series data that also you can say that uh, at a certain point you come with data so so either if t is continuous that means you know the value of uh, this uh, sample path between minus t to t okay so in that case you can introduce one estimate of the mean so anyone would to recall what was the estimate of mean would you like to recall what was the estimate of mean anyone anyone try to answer it sneha sneha gupta would you like to answer what was the estimate of mean 
in our study class we had already defined sneha are you listening me or not okay try to answer it what is meaning of absent I, I, okay i will check your attendance for last class saurabh would you like to answer what what is the estimate of uh, mean how you define sample mean for a stationary random process in order to estimate the mean saurabh saurabh mani would you like to answer it yeah yeah so how you define that i am talking about uh, that formula what is the ex explicit formula so i have defined two two different approach one uh, similar to sample mean like approach another was time average so uh, just i am talking what is the time average of sample mean our mean okay fine okay okay you are trying you are trying but not getting proper sense is average these are very much uh, uh, common for signal kind of things if you are having continuous signal then time average we define in term of integral that means we integrate the signal uh, in a given time interval and we divide it by the length of the interval so generally if suppose uh, for gen general signal if you take it happens to be periodic in nature so we take a symmetric uh, interval minus t to t and there over there we try to integrate that signal because here there is no randomness because we are taking a uh, realization of a random process so this this realization we have taken so that's way if you are willing to define average over this interval so it is very easy to define average that average we are calling it time average so how we define time average we define it we denote it by uh, this uh, bracket and su with suffix t and we integrate uh, the signal from minus t to t signal is what x of t omega here omega is fixed here okay right now dt omega is fixed here so this is the signal and after that we divide it by length of the interval what is the length of interval that one is 2t twice of t so this is we are calling it time average so time average is one estimate of the mean okay so in order to get value of mean you need to get explicit form of this one if you know the explicitly this random process then you will be able to Uh, compute this mean function but suppose you don't know this random process explicitly then what will happen you will face problem like uh, explicitly i what i am saying that i have taken various example like uh, uh, suppose your uh, amplitude is random in nature or phase is random in nature so sinusoidal wave if you are taking it omega uh, it will take a linear frequency 2 pi 2 pi t so it is a what it is a random process also you can take a random phase in that signal so if it is explicitly given to us so we can easily compute everything what was what what parameter is required so we can easily compute but if uh, the random process is not explicitly given it is suppose it is unknown just we know one realization of that random process so from that realization simply we say that time series data simply we are having time series measurement of that random process from there we try to come up with one estimate of the mean so this one is the estimate and it converts to mean of the random process in probability convergence in probability so and that one is what that one is simply talking about law of large number so here sample sampling that sampling size it is coming with respect to time time that t tends to infinity on that then in that case it will approach to mu in probability so that convergence we had already discussed it is coming through law, law of large number in last class we had already discussed also we had already discussed uh, regarding convergence of uh, time average of auto correlation to correlation uh, auto correlation okay time time average of auto correlation to 
true autocorrelation that we had already discussed and one more things uh, uh, i was trying to cover it was regarding estimation of uh, auto covariance so all these we are trying to come up with time series data so that means just uh, uh, suppose there is a dynamical system and then there would be various trajectories if you are taking uh, what is meaning of time series data you can realize suppose you are taking a linear dynamical system uh, simplest linear dynamical system then it may have a dynamic like this wave the, there would be various trajectory trajectory would be like this way. these are the circular trajectory for a given dynamical system simply i would like to two dimensional system i am taking x dot equal to uh, ax a is the coefficient matrix simplest dynamical system you are taking x dot equal to ax so so here a is diagonal in nature simply say that a is diagonal in nature or uh, diagonal in nature or uh, uh, here with real uh, coefficient okay real eigen values so this kind of trajectory you will see it here these are the trajectory of the uh, dynamical system x dot equal to ax so here what is observing that uh, with respect to a yeah, fix uh, just follow one any one trajectory hello and that you again observe time movement over there so with respect to time the particle along that trajectory it will keep on moving so you will take a fixed time frame and uh, over that just you will take measurement and from that measurement you try to learn the complete complete dynamics complete dynamics all the trajectory it is always possible that from a single trajectory you can learn all the trajectory it is always possible so that one is the learning approach what we say that from the given data <coughs> or time series data from the given time series data what we call so clearly you can say that it is periodic in nature so after each period after each 2 pi it will keep on repeating keep keep on repeating so that's the periodic nature that's why one period is coming 2t interval is coming i will just we focus on the interval of length 2t so likewise also we can define a uh, estimate of auto covariance how we define so first we integrate the this product of uh, uh, product of random random variable at t plus tau and at t in order to define auto co covariance it is what it is second order uh, moment second order moment so that's where two uh, random processes are coming okay and we we are integrating it from minus infinity to, to infinity after that we divide it by the length of the interval that one is 2t so that's where it uh, this we call it one estimate of auto covariance and this can easily it can be established that if you are how you can estimate that just try to find the mean of this one so we know from law of large number the sample mean is converging to true mean of the distribution in probability same concept is coming this sample mean is one estimate of mean mu true mean mu so that's where likewise this one this uh, um, temporal auto correlation covariance it is an estimate of uh, true covariance this one sigma sigma x of tau okay so we are claiming that this is converging to this in probability as t is approaching to infinity okay so how we can establish so we can establish through central law of large number in sense that first we need to find this one is the estimate of this one we are claiming that so we have to find the mean of this one our expectation of this one so if you are trying to find expectation of this one then definition follows this one and we know that expectation is what compatible with the integral so the expectation will go inside and finally after simplification we observe that the expectation of this sample or temporal uh, auto covariance temporal auto covariance is equal to what true this one is the true auto covariance it is equal to true auto covariance and this situation is only for a stationary random process we are not talking about non stationary we are just right now talking about a stationary random process okay so easily we can see that that uh, here 
the definition what we have defined through temporal average it is uh, what unbiased estimator of this one unbiased estimator of auto covariance so definitely uh, from law of large number when sample size is very very high that means approaching to infinity then it will converge to uh, this auto correlation in probability uh, so proof again if you are willing to see you can establish it uh, from the same criteria what you have adopted we have seen in law of large number there same thing you can apply it here in order to uh, prove, see the proof okay now we will talk about uh, multiple random processes so it is very much essential to know multiple random process when you are dealing with dynamical system okay with the uh, input output situation okay so here the first we need to know the joint behavior of two or more random processes so how we can know the joint behavior so okay so i had already mentioned for a single random process what you have to there is a technique in order to know the behavior of a random process or a, or a specification a specification of a random process how you know first you have to perform a sampling over time instant that we are calling it t1 t2 n time instant simply you can n sample also you can say that, say that sample instant so first this one is the starting one okay after that at the sample instant you come up with random variable xt1 xt2 and likewise xtn okay and uh, i had given name to these random variable uh, n n sample n time sample i had uh, called these are n time sample you can call that n time sample because we first we sample the time instant and then we sample the corresponding uh, we have taken the corresponding random variable okay so that's why we are calling it these are the n time sample so if you want to see the behavior of a random process just what you see do you try to uh, know the joint behavior of these n time samples this uh, joint behavior try to come to know what is the joint behavior so easily you can say that uh, simply uh, you can simply denote all these in together because jointly these are varying so you can denote it by a vector of dimension n a random vector of dimension n okay so it is very much essential that if you are having two random process xt it always happens to be is uh, suppose xt it is acting like an input to the system and we are having another random process that yt that would act as an output of the system that we are interested in what is the relation between these two random process xt and yt that uh, it is very much essential to know what is the relation between these two okay so that uh, that's why we have to know various parameter so the joint behavior of two or more random process is specified by the collection of joint distribution of all possible choices of time samples so all processes that's way uh, all process uh, all we hear the sampling time sampling of time instant we are doing in a random approach uh, simply it is a part of random sampling that equally likely approach any time would may include there okay in that end time instant okay any time so we do through uniform sampling or random sampling simply we can call it so with respect to you know, this time uh, n time instant we come up with uh, this n samples okay this uh, this n samples as likewise uh, for random process first random process xt likewise we come up with n time m time samples for a second random process yt okay and here uh, here uh, this sampling we do for all possible n and m so here n and n m both are variable here it vary okay and the uh, sampling instant happens to be uh, for first random process it is t1 t2 tn and for second it, it is t1 dash t2 dash up to tm dash so these are the sampling instant what we call it and these, uh, these are the corresponding time sample we are getting with respect to two different random process now we will uh, trying to what uh, get joint behavior of these random process in uh, random variable in together so if you try to see how in total how many random variables we are having we are having n plus m random variables and uh, due to this sampling instant these two type of sampling instant okay so we need to know the joint behavior so joint behavior will be given by the joint distribution of 
these two set of random variables okay so for simplicity i would like simply uh, define uh, we will take only uh, two sample instant t1 and t2 just for simplicity then we will complicate we, we may go go for three four five so for, suppose right now we, we are just going for uh, two time sampling instant t1 for that one is with respect to first random process t2 with respect to second random process so with respect to t1 we are getting random variable x t1 with respect to t2 we are getting random variable y t2 okay so here simply we are having two random variable x t1 y t1 so if you are willing to know the random process joint behavior of random process you have to so you have to come up with joint distribution of the these two random variables okay joint at time t1 and at time t2 so how we define the density of this one joint density of this one uh, we uh, if you multiply the corresponding a small aerial element with the joint density then it approximate the area the, uh, approximate the probability that x y is observing value over this rectangle over this rectangle simply rectangle rect for simplest case so you can say this is the situation rectangle this one is x1 and this one is x1 plus uh, dx uh, here take it like this way suppose this point is y1 x1 is here x1 plus tx this point is y1 and this point is y plus dy y plus ty so that situation is coming and that is the situation coming over here this uh, rectangular region uh, x is x is what x is equal to uh, x t1 and y is equal to y t2 so that simple notation we are taking and over this aerial element we try to find what is the probability that x y is observing value uh, from this rectangle okay so that probability this is the desired probability and that probability we can directly come related with if you know the distribution we function we can relate it from there okay so note that the time indices of random process x t and y y t need not be the same need not be the same it may be different so like uh, here uh, what uh, i have taken this kind of notation and this kind of notation it may be different okay so that notation you can say that so for example we may be interested in input t1 and uh, output t2 it is not like that a uh, random process input uh, would be uh, if you are computing at t1 then the output would also need to compute at t2 uh, it may it is not like that uh, always we will compute at the same time we may compute at different time as well so it depends upon our choices so that's where t1 t2 the different time we have taken it like this way so coming to uh, discuss about parameter of a uh, family of random process or uh, more than two random processes cross word is coming cross means uh, simply it is talking two different random variable or more than two different random variable so that's why cross word auto means within the random process and cross means we are going out of the random process with uh, we try to see uh, relation with another random process that's why cross word is coming so suppose random process xt it uh, xt and yt will say say that these two would be independent random process if the uh, time sampling time samples time sample that x t1 x2 up to x t1 and y t1 dash y2 dash up to y t m dash it will be independent to independent for every choice of n and m if it is independent for every choice of uh, n and m then simply we can say that the corresponding random process would be independent to each other and uh, here uh, it is very difficult to uh, prove directly this re result independent result but dependency we can prove easily what just we have to look for one counter example where for that time samples uh, we will observe some dependency if you observe some dependency then simply we can claim that the random process would be no more independent it would be dependent so so it is very easy to establish dependency rather than independency in an independency you have to deal with average choice of n and m
okay so in case of um, independent random process so easily we can find the joint dist distribution of these two random process x and y as a product of individual distribution of uh, individual distribution of x and in distribution of y individually so if it, it is only possible when uh, these two random process are independent to each other right now i am not saying that each member of the random process x is independent here further you need to compute this one if it is independent each xi happens to be independent then it will be further factored into product but uh, here within that means uh, you can say that intra independent we are not considering here we are considering here inter independent so inter independent between there are two random process and those two are independent only if it satisfy this condition that distribution can be factored into distribution of x into distribution of y then we will say that these two random process happens to be inde independent independent and this one is true for any choice of n and m it is not like that if we are getting a counter example then we, we will simply face problem it would be no more independent dependency would be there okay this must true for all n and m so here we are defining cross correlation of a random process uh, xt and yt how we define it as a joint second order moment joint second order moment of xt1 and yt2 and the similar definition is similar to what we had already seen uh, uh, for cross uh, autocorrelation here difference is that uh, expectation we are finding expectation of xt1 it is coming from random process xt and yt2 it is coming from random process second random process yt y okay so that is the difference and from the definition of expectation in the similar process we will compute distribution uh, by including joint density of uh, xy okay like also we can define cross correlation covariance how huh? and it is uh, that definition it is borrowed from definition of variance that they saying that uh, uh, expectation of product of these two mean deviated random variable so uh, this one is mean of um, second random process this one is mean of first random process at time t1 okay so that's where so if you simplify it then it will be uh, divided it will be simplified into in like this way that means it is talking about the difference between uh, cross correlation of uh, these two random process at t1 and t2 uh, minus product of mean at t1 for from random process x and mean of uh, second random process at time t2 okay so if you from here also you can define uh, correlation coefficient this is the correlation coefficient that is the uh, what it is simply ratio of co covariance and divide by a standard corresponding a standard division that, that means a square root of variance simply we can say that so everyone know that uh, value of uh, the correlation coefficient it falls between minus one and one it is observing value between minus one and one so i don't have to discuss much uh, this quantity and uh, this co coefficient of co correlation we don't just we will talk about how to estimate all these and uh, through example we will try to compute this one for given example so let us take few example in order to compute cross correlation and cross covariance of two different random process so again we are taking a, a sinusoidal two different sinusoidal signal uh, random signal so here here xt we are taking here, here with random phase um, theta and yt is a sin sign signal that one is sign signal and xt is the cosine signal yt is a sign signal the, both are different simply we can say that and with both are having random phase and that uh, random phase is distributed uniformly in the interval minus pi to pi so easily you can say that it is having a distribution uniform distribution 1 by 2 pi when theta is observing value from the interval minus pi to pi outside that theta is observing value 0 density is 0 simply so we say that so we are having two continuous time continuous random value process so we will compute first mean function then we will compute uh, uh, cross correlation and cross co co covariance at two different time so mean it would be very easy that it is a sign signal and we we, uh, we can compute mean of this one it is a due to periodic nature it would be zero and mean of the yt would be also zero okay easily you can it is very verifiable because uh, you know through periodic nature of cosine and sine function okay now we are trying to so here mean function is zero so that's way uh, easily we can say that 
cross covariance it would be equal to cross correlation at two different time t1 and t2 and if you are willing to compute that uh, uh, cross correlation so this is this is the definition of cross correlation so we are going to compute from the definition that we are finding the expectation of product of these two uh, random variables okay at this one is at time t1 and this two at time t2 so we just need to simplify it by using uh, trigonometrical identity okay uh, that uh, definition of cosine and sine is coming so it would borrowed from expansion of cos uh, sine expansion of sine a plus b or sine a minus b it will be borrowed from there sine a plus b and sine a minus b if uh, both terms happen to be sine or cosine that and then in, uh, that identity uh, the, that one is coming from uh, expansion of cos a plus b and cos a minus b from there we can borrow so it is very simple to borrow it here so it can be written like this way and if you, after uh, finding the expectation that means integrating from minus infinity to infinity and finally you will get this is the cross correlation and easily we can see that cross pro correlation it is also time invariant that means it is just function of uh, difference between t1 and t2 it is not function of t1 and t2 it is function of function of the difference between these two so that's why that property we are calling it time invariant so we, along like if you uh, one example i had already uh, mentioned that if you define a hyperplane with, uh, with respect to the this difference along that hyperplane uh, or uh, we observe that this sine function is always constant it is taking same value there is no variability along that uh, hyperplane uh, t1 minus t2 equal to c or something what you call it definitely it would be hyperplane along that this one is invariant totally it is invariant so that that is the concept uh, coming here so so the above random process x t y t are simply we can say that are not uncorrelated because the cross correlation is not equal to zero cross correlation is not equal to zero for all choices of the sampling so it would be zero only when difference between this is equal to zero so if it is zero then we say we can say that cross correlation would be equal to zero but suppose if it is not zero then we can't uh, comment over uh, that uncorrelation definitely those would be correlated so when sine function is zero sine of then when this argument is k times pi so that's where for all those value where the difference is uh, difference between time t1 and t2 it is integral multiple of pi integral multiple of pi in that case we can say that uh, in that case these two random process would be uh, uncorrelated otherwise these two would be correlated if this difference is not equal to k pi then simply we can say that uh, in that case x t y 2 would be correlated not uncorrelated means correlated suppose y t consists of a desired signal of x t plus some noise this one is one example we are taking it so the taking a random process which is having noisy behavior so here x t x t is the true signal true random process okay and we are not able to see this one just we are able to see yt and yt we say that yt is the noisy version of xt that means some noise is added to xt then we are getting yt so this noise is coming why because of the measurement measurement noise what we call it then cross correlation between the this also you can say that this is the observed signal and this is the actual signal what we want to estimate and this is the noise that uh, while measuring this noise is introduced in the observation okay so then we need to compute the cross correlation between observed signal yt and desired signal xt how we can compute that so we, uh, through the formula of cross correlation we just find expectation of uh, uh, product of xt1 and yt2 okay at two different time so t1 we have taken this measure and this observation of random desired random signal at t1 and this one the uh, observation at t2 okay and we are finding the expectation so what is happening that we know that yt is what it is an observation noisy observation of xt that's why we are writing yt in term of xt 
and just simplify it keep on simplifying then we know that here due to the random independent nature we are easily we see that uh, xt noise would be always independent of true measure true signal or desired signal always there would be independency between xt and nt uh, so due to that this uh, after simplification this will be factored out into in this form okay and here what is happening that what does it talk about if you talk, try to talk about what does it represent it represents the uh, cross correlation between x x y at time t1 and t2 cross correlation we are talking about cross correlation between x y at time t1 t2 plus it is what easily we can find what does it talk about so due to independent nature uh, expectation of product of these two will be factored into pro product of expectation due to independent nature and we know that this one is the mean of mm, random process x at time t1 and this will give mean of random process noisy uh, noisy noisy random process or noise noise as a random process at time t2 and hence we are getting the cross correlation between x and y at time t1 t2 like in this term okay now we are going to discuss about uh, third part of today's lecture it is already above 45 minutes so probably in next class we will discuss about arrival process like uh, just recall uh, what simplest arrival process you have already observed that uh, supermarket uh, that when you are going to buy some cloth and shoes or sports item whatever uh, things you are needed generally in cities su supermarket concept is very much common so uh, when you observe the arrival of customer that always follow some kind of random process we can model with the help of random process the simplest random process that is able to model a arrival process we, we are calling it bernoulli another one is poisson and later we will study further uh, other kind of random process as well regarding attendance